Hello and happy holidays and welcome to Cooking with Sarah. And today we are going to look at some party foods, some nice light foods that you can take to your corporate Christmas party or your hangout with your friends Christmas party or your sit alone in your apartment because your friends are all bajillions of miles away Christmas party. But anyway, uh, let's get started here and off we go. Okay, first thing we're going to take a look at, let me get the stuff out of here. It's just some uh, nice little easy appetizers. And we've been over some of these before in the past. Your broccoli and dip, which is heavy cream, a mixing bowl, an onion, of course, broccoli to dip in it. I'm just going to take those. Oops. <laughs> I did it wrong. There we go. How do I forestry table? There we go. And uh, actually, let me go ahead and get out of creative. I always forget to do that. There we go. Now, over here, we have what some people might not really think of as a Christmas food, but in Texas, um, yeah, anything with uh, chili peppers, butter, and meat is probably going to be a big hit. So, yeah, you just fry up your chicken wings and, you know, make your little butter and chili pepper sauce. And, you know, I've tried insanity wings, you know, the kind you have to sign a waiver. It's fun to eat one of them once in a while just to show everybody how tough you are, but, you know, when you can't taste them, that's not really the point of eating them. So I usually get around the two or three pepper range. I go to Bio City Wings a lot and get the Asian barbecue is my favorite. But anyway, I digress. Another good, uh, cheap, easy appetizer is your stuffed mushrooms. Any old mushrooms, I think white mushrooms, red mushrooms, brown mushrooms will work. And you uh, crumble up some toast, which again is bread in a furnace or a frying pan, and some cheese together. Smoosh it into the mushroom caps. And when I do stuffed mushrooms, I like to chop up the stems and saute them with some wine and some garlic and butter. And then mix that in with the cheese and the breadcrumbs, shove them back into the mushrooms, and then you bake them for a little while until they're nice and brown on top. And the cheese is nice and bubbly. Another good portable food you have here is uh, kebabs, skewers, pretty much any kind of a kebab, any uh, chicken, beef, whatever. If they can carry it around on a stick, it's good to have at a party. Uh, this just happens to be the veggie kebab. I've never seen carrots on a kebab in my life, but what the hell, we'll roll with it. <laughs> It's just uh, any vegetables you can find. Chop them up, thread them on a stick, and you can either just do it like that and serve it with a side of dip, or you can grill them and also serve them with a side of dip. You cannot go wrong with ranch dressing. Now, of course, if you're going to have an outdoor Christmas party or even an indoor Christmas party, you need hot chocolate. I think we went over hot chocolate way back in the Stump Butts Cafe episode along with the tea and the coffee and all that other stu good stuff. And I've got a word to say to you about tea <laughs> here in just a little bit, but we will get to that in a bit. Hot chocolate is fresh milk, cocoa powder, and for reasons I'm not entirely sure of, a juicer. I'm just going to slurp that down right now because it is cold outside. Ah, mm, that's better. Well fed, okay. Now there is another classic holiday beverage in Magic Farm eggnog. However, it doesn't seem to have a recipe. So I tried to brute force it. I tried all kinds of combinations of eggs and milk and nutmeg and cinnamon, and it just doesn't seem to work. So, um, hmm. Maybe there just is no recipe for it. I don't know. Sad, but what can you do? Alright, we've been over everything on this table. Now let's get some desserts. Um, portable desserts. Peanut butter cookies, any kind of cookies, is a classic for Christmas parties. Your peanut butter is going to be simple. It's eggs, flour, peanut butter, and sugar. Mush it up together. Make balls, drop them on a cookie sheet a few inches apart, give them room to spread if they happen to want to spread, but cookie di peanut butter cookies usually don't, which is why you do that nice little crisscross thing on top of them with a fork. Also, peanut butter cookies that don't have the crisscross thing on top of them, you're doing it wrong because that's how you can look at it and identify it as a peanut butter cookie. 
Another baked good that you can take with you is gingerbread. You will need ginger, ground cinnamon, an egg, flour, butter. Shove that in the bakeware, shove it in the oven. And gingerbread, this is another reason why I want to live in this world. Gingerbread is a nourishing meal. And a really high class dessert that's going to require you to get along with forestry. Poached pears. If you have never had a poached pear, I feel so very sorry for you. Did I say poached pear? Poached pear. <laughs> it's been a long day, folks. All right. You're going to have to breed pears. There's just no way around it unless you happen to be close to a village that happens to have a test certificate peddling pear saplings. You're going to have to get into bees. Another thing you're going to have to do, um, unnamed. Well, what the heck is this? Unnamed is vanilla that you have roasted in a furnace. Now, for some reason, it does not work in the frying pan. So you will have to use just a vanilla furnace. Anyway, you poach your pears in a saucepan and mix up a nice little glaze of vanilla and sugar to baste them with or poach them in. And that is a lovely, classy little dessert. And you can sprinkle it with a little bit of cinnamon. Um, and it's just delicious. So what are we going to do with all this food? Well, I'm going to make as much of all this food as I can because... I've got to um, cater a party here at a Christmas village, or village is kind of an overstatement, at a little Christmas dome, Christmas igloo, that I have set up. And the guests have not arrived yet, but I would like to be ready for them. So let's get um, just all of this make up as much as I can with what I have. Okay, well, uh, the peanut butter cookies are mine, I guess. And just dump. Um, Nom, 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 nom. And let's see, uh, the broccoli and dip, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll put that out on the tables. And uh, of course, um, one other holiday favorite, red velvet cake. I don't have, uh, have it in one of the uh, tables right now. It is kind of a complex recipe. You need milk, you need heavy cream, Flour, sugar, eggs, and two batches of rose red dye. Of course, you get heavy cream by taking fresh milk and swirling it up in a mixing bowl. Anywho, you bake it up in your bakeware, slather it with cream cheese frosting, make it pretty, sprinkle some crumbs on top of it, and I'm going to jump over the counter like a wild animal. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to have to actually, um, I can walk. I think I can walk. Yeah, I can walk because it's nice and solid this way. Over here, I have set up a venue for a lovely Christmas party. And you can kind of start to see it peeking through the trees there. Oops, there's a little bit that didn't freeze. That's okay. And we'll just, uh, here we go. We have our little skating pond out in front of it. And um, I'm just going to fix this all up. We're going to bend space and time. We're going to get some snow going. And I'll just do a little... Um, guests aren't going to show up for another few minutes, so I'll just get some ice skating in. Whee! Let's see if I can do a double axle. Whoop! Okay. Whoa! Whoo! Getting dizzy. All right. And here we have our lovely Christmas tree made out of warded stone and jukebox, which will allow me to do that without having a, an unsightly jukebox flying around here. Um, don't try this outside of creative. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's some Thomcraft stuff involved here. But this was the only way that I could do a Christmas tree and properly decorate it with uh, the different color buttons. I think this is bloodwood. I think that's dark wood. I think that's a maple button. Anyway, I think these are all natural tree buttons here. I used green warded stone to build the tree. I covered it with Thomcraft candles to light it up and parked a crystal core on top of it for a fancy star. 
And I just kind of left the roof of the dome open here so it would snow and look all festive and stuff. I've got all our tables set in our snowflake pattern floor with our pretty little centerpieces and our nice snow white. Uh, that's um, blah, 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 mangrove wood. So I'm going to go ahead and set the tables here in a little bit. And this is going to be our last episode until after the new year. I have a little bit of a surprise here because when Cooking with Sarah returns after the new year, I'm not abandoning Magic Farm. I will keep doing stuff in Magic Farm. But uh, there is now another Feed the Beast pack with a lot of cooking mods in it. It is called uh, Horizons. Or Horizon, singular possibly. I, I can't remember which. It's a 1.6 pack. It has Aquaculture, Agriculture, and Pam's Harvest Craft. So I will be doing another cooking show, splitting my time between Magic Farm and Horizon. Or Horizons, whichever it is when we come back after the new year. Until then, happy holidays, happy new year, have a safe and happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Yule, Diwali, whatever it is that you celebrate, Festivus, I don't care. What is important is that you have a good one. So bon appetit, and I will see you next year, folks. Bye-bye.